Hello and welcome everyone. It is 1130 Central, so we will get started. Thank you for tuning in to today's webinar, Best Practices for Integrating Entrepreneurship into CTE Courses. My name is Emily and I will be your moderator today. Presenting, we have Denise Dubois. Denise is the product manager here at RealityWorks and has been with us for over 15 years. She is a frequent presenter, trainer, and blogger for all things related to family and consumer sciences, health sciences, EMS, and human services. Denise has experience teaching in Wisconsin and in Minnesota and has over 20 years of education and marketing experience and professional development. She is also the co-chair for the Alliance for Family and Consumer Sciences, so she is a fantastic resource for today's presentation. But before we get started, I do want to cover a couple things. First, today's presentation is being recorded and all attendees will receive a link to that recording as well as a copy of the PowerPoint slides and handouts that Denise will be going over. For those of you attending live, you will be receiving a certificate of completion and you will see that in your email within 24 hours after the webinar. We will have time at the end for a Q&A session, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in the chat or the Q&A section located at the bottom of your screen. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Denise to get us started. Thanks, Emily, and welcome everyone to our session today on best practices for integrating entrepreneurship into CTE courses. And here's a little uh, lineup about what we're going to be talking about in the next little while here. We are going to be sharing several best practices for teaching entrepreneurship education, as well as sharing some research on um, how, it, how students would like to learn best. Then I've got a lot of activities and lessons and free resources that I'm going to share with you that you could try. And then I'm going to go over a little bit about a brand new supplemental program on contemporary entrepreneurship uh, that we have to offer. And then we will end up with a chance for some Q&A at the end. So let's take a look. First of all, let's define entrepreneurship. You know, there's a lot of definitions out there. People define it in many ways, but sometimes it's, it's under, misunderstood. Now, many people imagine it to be just starting a business and making money, but there really is more to it than that. It's more than just having a business. It's almost a special way of life and a mindset where people are innovative and they try to solve problems and at the same time, create value in society. And you'll find both local, state, and national economies rise and fall on the growth of entrepreneurship. And here are just a few definitions that I found when searching for what I thought was a good description of entrepreneurship. And if you look at these, uh, some of the words that really stand out are, you know, doing things in a new way, um, making, making innovations, you know, changing the world, seeing problems, so seeing things in a different way. So why is entrepreneurship education important? And here are five benefits that I have found that I'd like to, to talk about a little bit more. So let's talk number one, preparing your students for that uncertain future. Right now, we live in an age of unprecedented global and technological transformation. And we know that our students today are going to face an uncertain future. There's going to be many complex global, social, and environmental issues. Now, according to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs survey, they said half of today's work activities could be automated by 2055. So this would mean creating completely new roles, responsibilities, and challenges for the future workforce. So entrepreneurship focused programs will help teach your students crucial life skills that will help them navigate that uncertain future. So you, it's gonna teach them things like problem solving, teamwork, empathy, so forth. Number two, leave room for creativity and collaboration. Entrepreneurship education should encourage creativity, innovation, and collaboration. These attributes are highly valued by the top colleges in the world and will serve your students very well beyond high school. Number three, teach problem identification. Students need to learn how to identify problems before they can be expected to solve them. Now in the real world, problems can only be solved when they've been properly identified and described. So entrepreneurship education should teach students to identify problems that have never been encountered before. And this is a skill, again, that will be very useful in tomorrow's world. <clears throat> Number four, develop passion and persistence. Passion and sustained persistence applied toward long-term achievement can be defined as grit. The demanding and uncertain journey for entrepreneurs requires more passion and sustained persistence 
than most other activities. And number five, simply making the world a better place. Entrepreneurs seek to solve problems, meet needs, and ease pain points with the help of their products and services. People like that are, they're really hardwired to make a difference and make the world a better place. So by participating in entrepreneurship education, you can help your students become ready to change the world. So how do students prefer to learn entrepreneurship? In this table, students prefer entre entrepreneurship education methods, which are connected with live information. That means um, the most popular are things like seminars where experts in the entrepreneurial environment share their experience. It gives your students a great opportunity to ask these individuals questions. The second next preferred method are business simulations where your students uh, can run their own business and uh, that kind of eliminates that fear of failure. The third preferred method is playing the role that belongs to active learning. So you can see here that the top three very interactive uh, ways to get your, to get your students uh, engaged in the content. Um, so the main result by doing this is that students prefer methods that gain real information and try some real situations other than those traditional teaching methods. So let's take a closer look at each of the four suggested techniques for entrepreneurship education. In an article by Professor Patricia Green of Babson College, she proposes four complementary techniques for teaching entrepreneurship as a method rather than a process. And these four are starting businesses, serious games and simulations, design-based learning, and reflective practice. So let's take a closer look at each. First of all, starting a business. Remember the preferred method students like uh, for learning entrepreneurship is role-playing. Role-playing is among those. One of the best within the entrepreneurship is having your students work on a business startup. Your students can role-play that role of an entrepreneur. And this is advocating really real world venture creation. So you have your students develop and help them develop a level of insight and confidence from practicing business plan development and thinking like an entrepreneur. So have them go, go through those steps. Number two is serious games and simulations. Remember back to the way students preferred to learn entrepreneurship. This was second on the list and it was uh, business simulations. Now, the influence of computer games and gaming on this generation is, of course, undeniable, with more and more educators looking for ways to incorporate this type of thing into the classroom. A serious game is usually defined as having rules and a sense of gameplay. <clears throat> Second, there is the expectation, of course, of fun. So gaming and simulation aligns learning, play, and participation while expo exposing students to real challenges in a virtual world. There are a variety of entrepreneur simulations available. In fact, there are quite a few. And I've picked out just, just a few to highlight. Now, the first one is uh, says interpretive simulations, and it's of a retail clothing store that you could uh, try. The Knowledge Matters one, it's an entrepreneurship and it includes several different projects. One, of, one is called the Shark Project, where students pitch their businesses to classmates and then and seek virtual investments. They also have a business plan project and teachers award students a loan based on their written business plan. Now there's one also called Mega Mogul where students uh, start with one business and work to grow and expand their entrepreneurial business empire. So several choices there. Uh, Go Venture has one, it's another source and it has a uh, realistic small business startup and operations simulation-based learning in the world. So you start with a lemonade stand, and then you go to a kiosk, you can go to a food truck, and then a full-on business. And then you build out a regional franchise from the ground up. So that would give your students a lot of real-world practice in a very safe, simulated environment. So here are a few more serious games and sources of information that specifically focus on the world of entrepreneurship. First of all, marketplace. It uh, says you can give your students the skills they need to create and manage the next big thing. So you let them experience the highs and the lows of starting a new venture in an engaging game-like exercise. 
So your students will perform a business opportunity analysis. Then they experiment with some business strategies, they design, and then they launch new products into the market. And then they manage the entire product life cycle from the introduction to growth through to maturity. So they learn to prepare a business plan, make a pitch for outside capital. So they really start to think like a successful entrepreneur. Now, there is research on the use of serious games and simulations in entrepreneurship, and I've included a link here. This article expands knowledge and understanding of educational practice in entrepreneurship by focusing on uh, serious games, specifically computer simulations, which model entrepreneurship. So the paper begins by reviewing the entrepreneurship education literature to consider and considering the role of simulations. And then it goes on to explore the nature of serious games and then it goes on to assess the role of the games in simulated entrepreneurial learning. So this might be something that you find useful to, to take a look at. And then I just included the last link that you see up there for sim companies. It is a free simulation game online, but there are a whole lot more to choose from. So I just wanted to share a few that, that I found after a, a brief search. Number three, <clears throat> design-based learning. Nobel Prize winning economist Herbert Simon argued that applied disciplines are better served by design based curricula. Design is a process requiring skills in observation, synthesis, searching and generating alternatives, critical thinking, feedback, visual representation, creativity, problem solving, and value creation. And these all weave in high order thinking skills. So at the core of entrepreneurship, there's that identification and maximizing these opportunities. So many times in a traditional entrepreneurship course, a little time is given to practicing tools of creativity and idea generation. And overall, sometimes little is done to train a student to think more entrepreneurially and creatively um, to participate in that uh, opportunity discovery process. So we propose that integrating fundamental design principles is important to students. So you equip them with the tools not only to find the opportunities, but also to create them. Also by incorporating that design process into your program, students can put their creativity to work in concept design and planning. So they learn to clarify the problem, develop a solution, and then turn the solution into a business. Now, number four, when we think about reflective practice. Reflection we know is a really important process by which knowledge is developed from experience. So when reflecting, a student considers an experience that's happened and tries to understand and explain it, which can often lead to insight and deeper thinking. So as a result, reflection is really an important component of entrepreneurship education, and it's also a way of practicing entrepreneurship. So given the nature of entrepreneurship as a continuous cycle of action, learning, testing, and experimenting, developing students as reflective entrepreneurs requires reflection on practice and reflection in practice as a part of their learning process. So now that we've shared some definitions and some best practices for entrepreneurship education, we're going to share some new ideas, some resources and activities that maybe you'll find a few that you like and can try. So first of all, here's one that we call the envelope exercise. And this one really is the challenge is very simple. Um, we are going to be creative and have our students try to be creative and increase the investment that they're given. So you start out by, uh, first of all, you have to prep a little bit. You um, are good. This is a small group exercise. So you're going to need envelopes and you're going to need to print off some fake dollar bills or money. And there's a lot of different ones uh, you can find on the internet. I've included a link here, but you, you, you print them off, you cut them apart, and then you place a very small amount of this uh, faux cash in an envelope for each small group or individual. Um, you can vary the amount that you give or you can make them all the same, that is your choice. But then the challenge is for them to try to brainstorm how they can increase that investment and maybe allow for 20 to 30 minutes of brainstorming, they're gonna capture all their ideas. And then in the end, you're gonna have uh, the individual or the recorder from the small group share their plan and something like that when it's a finite fairly short amount of time it builds a sense of urgency and students have a lot of fun just coming up with very very creative 
uh, ideas for being able to increase the amount that they found in that envelope. Here's a defining problems exercise that I came across. So you could show pictures that contain potential problems or issues, kind of like the ones you see on the screen in front of you. You ask students to, first of all, define the issues that they can see, and further, what questions would they ask or what additional information would they need to help define the problem? Now, usually they always wanna start with a solution, but really the key here is getting them to define the problem better, which is half the work of solving the problem anyway. So that's just one, one fun way to do that. The next one we call is Ready, Set, Design. And here you're gonna give each group, this is a group exercise, a challenge. And the challenge card can be phrased um, something like, uh, here's an example. Imagine a new way to drink on the go or imagine a new communication system. Try to use open-ended phrases as your challenges. Then each group gets a bag of ordinary materials. They could be rubber bands, something uh, to provide a surface or a structure. Uh, and then, uh, for example, you could have a, a fastener, you could have it, a clip or a, ru a rubber band. The surface could be a paper or foil or even cardboard, and the structure could be spaghetti or pipe cleaners. And then you're going to have your students create with their hands um, to uh, try to solve that challenge card. And you're going to get those new ideas flowing without getting caught up in trying to make things perfect. Um, students get 15 minutes. Again, you've got that, that shorter amount of time. And in the end, each group will present their design and how their idea solves the problem or the challenge that was on that challenge card. So that could take a lot of different, different directions, but it's a fun one. Again, it gets your students hands on and being really creative without being uh, focused on, on being a perfectionist. Here's one called the Lean Startup. And this is useful for sparking interesting conversations um, in your classroom because these have short focused video clips um, on a podcast. And there are mishaps and adventures featured in the podcast to illuminate important ideas and concepts. So the episodes are really a perfect match with so many concepts relating to entrepreneurships and lean startups. So that might be a website you'd like to go to and see if there are any of the, the um, podcasts on there that you'd like to use in your program. The next idea is called the business proposition. Now, have your students articulate their value proposition in a concise way. Now, that really may sound simple, but it's always challenging the students at first. So at this link, there are a few ideas for uh, faux businesses or pretend products that could be used as a starter idea for this. Or you could even challenge your students to come up with their own unique product or business concept. Then after that, you're going to have them try to whittle it down into a very concise statement. Uh, why would a customer choose your product or service? We want that, that uh, value proposition to communicate the clearest benefit that customers receive by uh, giving you their business. So every value proposition should speak to a customer's challenge and make the case for your company or idea as the problem solver. So a great value proposition may highlight what makes you different from your competitors, but it should always focus on how customers define your value. Likewise, conversations around things like brand strategy and taglines uh, could stem from a value proposition, but they really aren't one and the same. So another, another uh, fun and easy way to incorporate, they incorporate that into a lesson. Wacky ideas and two minute pitch. Here's a fun thing. You can find any two objects. They don't have to have any connection whatsoever. Uh, you could find enough common objects. Uh, for example, I've got uh, some things here on the on the board um, or on the screen. I've got um, toothpicks and I've got cotton balls. Well, you could choose anything or have a whole variety of things. Students need to choose or have two unrelated objects to get started. First of all, um, they're going to take a look and try to come up with some wacky ideas of how they could integrate the two of these unrelated things into one invention or one idea. And then they have to define it. What is it? And what can it do? Who would use it? You know, how could it be used differently? Or, or you know, what could you use it for? And it's really fun to see your students try to connect to 
wildly different things into one coherent um, specific idea. So once they land on what they think this thing is going to be, then they have to outline their pitch and it's only going to be two minutes. So they could uh, outline, outline this on a piece of paper, but they need to decide how they're going to introduce themselves. Maybe they come up with a name for their company. Then they're going to quickly explain their new idea for a product or service. And then they're going to explain how their invention works and why people need it in their life. So if you have 20 students in your class, uh, perhaps you want all of them to do this independently, which is fine. Just make sure that you uh, have enough class time, and this might uh, go over two class periods, so that each student or small group can pitch their, do their two minute pitch for their, for their wacky idea. Again, kind of a fun one. Reverse brainstorming. This is one where you actually make the problem worse. And this helps you uh, think in a new way than perhaps you've done before. For example, um, it's loud in the lunchroom, and you know perhaps you can hear the library. You you can't hear in the library where you are, and it and you can't concentrate while you're reading. So you think, well, how can I make it even worse? And if you take that that example, um, you know, uh, remove a, a wall and let the, there be even more noise or whatever. But anyway brainstorm, fun, wacky ideas, how to make it worse. And then you take each way you've made it worse and you come up with a way to solve the issue. So for example, instead of making a sign in the lunchroom to tell students to keep their voices down, implement a policy in the library that gets everyone noise canceling headphones upon entry. So uh, we're trying to help your students learn to, to think outside the box in a different way than they've tried before. So uh, reverse brainstorming is a fun way to do that. And there are even reverse brainstorming videos on YouTube that will pose a problem for your students to consider um, and talk you through this if you're interested. So another one you, you may want to check out. Now, if you search on YouTube, there are literally hundreds of short free videos on all aspects of entrepreneurship. And these can make great pieces to help you kick off a class or even have your students uh, watch on their own to help augment what you're already covering. And here again, there's three that I found that, that are uh, relatively short, you know, they're all under 15 minutes, uh, defining what is an entrepreneur, who are entrepreneurs, uh, best advice from entrepreneurs, a lot, a lot of things out there that are free that you could incorporate. So here are a few other free things that I found. Uh, first of all, if you go to the first link, you will find a brief form that gives you access to something called mindset card games. There are 24 mindset cards in a deck. Game one, each uh, player's dealt a card and you're gonna, um, these are to, uh, uh, it's to read the mindset definition and answer the question on the card. Uh, you've got another game where, um, uh, you have to somehow connect the different cards. Uh, game four, um, you place a card in the middle and all the different players have to connect somehow to that. So there's there's many different ways that you can use those. So you might want to check that out. The second link is to a free five lesson pitch challenge. And it's really a simple set of activities that will help kids learn creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, and presentation skills. Uh, the pitch challenge teaches kids to critically, um, um, or teaches them critical workforce readiness skills. And it also helps develop a mindset for those 21st century careers, whether or not they become an entrepreneur. And then that third link, um, it's from the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas, and it has free lesson plans and activities uh, for K through 12. So you just click on the link and it will take you to those activities. So now that I've shared a few of those um, activities to get those creative juices flowing in your classes, we would like to share a brand new resource from RealityWorks that can help you integrate entrepreneurship education into any CTE program. And it's called Contemporary Entrepreneurship. And it's a two to three week unit. It's a supplemental curriculum that will help your students learn how to think like an entrepreneur. You've got lesson plans, student workbooks, vocabulary cards, but they're gonna progress through the program. They're gonna think like an entrepreneur. They are gonna learn how to come up with ideas. So that idea generation, 
Uh, they're going to learn market research tactics. They're going to even consider legal and financial issues. Then they actually write a 10-part business plan all around the idea that they've come up with. And then it ends the unit with a shark tank, like something called product pitch day. And you're going to have uh, local professionals who are going to form your panel and your students are going to pitch their, their product. So if you taught this whole program, it would be anywhere from 40, 14 to 23 hours of teaching time, depending on how deep you go. Um, but it could easily fill two to three weeks in any CTE program. So here's a little bit more about the components. Uh, there are 10 lessons in the curriculum and you get 20 student workbooks to start with and then you can order more as you, as you need. Um, you have slide presentations that are ready to go with the, with the lectures. And then there are printable vocabulary flashcards that you can, uh, you can create a deck for each individual student, or you can pair them up in small groups. But we really know how important vocabulary development is um, in CT programs. And we have aligned this with a couple of different sets of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship educational national standards. And we've also aligned it to the uh, Small Business Administration 10 steps to starting your own business. So all of the lessons do align with those two areas. Now here's a layout of each of the 10 lessons, the activities, and the number of vocabulary cards for each lesson. And I know some of it's a lot of detail. The, the main point is there's assessment built in, there are presentation notes, activities, and core academics integrated throughout each of the lessons. So even if you are not an entrepreneur, expert, you don't need to be. You have all the information that you need at your fingertips to help integrate this into really any CTE area. It's supplemental. Even if you're already got a textbook or, or your own creative materials, you could easily slip something like this in for a week or two so they can uh, learn more about thinking like an entrepreneur. So here's a sample lesson I just want to pull out to show you a little bit uh, closer look. This is on financial issues. So you'd start the lesson where you give a, a pretest to kind of see what they know. Then there's information on uh, for presentation slides and lectures. There is, there's a graphic organizer where they can take notes if you'd like. And then once they've learned the information, then they're gonna put it into, they're gonna apply it into the um, workbook activities. And you can see in this one, there's actually four different activities in the workbook all around financial issues. They're also gonna do a uh, part of the lessons all about that vocabulary development. And then they're gonna take a post test um, in this particular lesson. So you can see that there's very detailed notes that accompany each of the slides in the lesson. So again, you don't have to be an expert or you can even have a substitute teacher come in and teach these lessons and it makes it uh, very, very easy to do. Um, you also, again, have that graphic organizer. And we know that these are often used to help students understand what they're reading. It helps them keep organized um, while listening. It helps recall um, information better at the end. And it's also research-based. It's when, whether you're taking notes or using a graphic organizer, there's actually research that says that is a best practice uh, to use with your students. You'll also see higher order thinking skills built into the lessons. Um, so we're doing things like analyzing, compare and contrast, researching. We want your students to be doing more of those higher order thinking skills um, and honing those. And then also we, we try to build in some core uh, vocabulary development into each of the lessons as well. Um, you've got those printable flashcards. We've got uh, three or four different uh, recommended activities or ways that you could use those. And this is, is really uh, great when you can integrate vocabulary into CTE courses because your students are exposed to brand new terms in different contexts in CTE. And many times these, these vocabulary terms are new to them. So getting them to understand them and use them correctly is really important. And then of course, our uh, supplemental program will culminate, culminate with that product pitch day. So we encourage instructors to get panels from local business professionals, and then each year students will get their 10 minutes to pitch that idea. And that is the kind of the culmination of the lesson. So we know that most CTSO organizations have entrepreneurship uh, con competitions. So a program like ours is really a great way to prepare for that, or in some cases, it really can help them uh, create that final product for the competition. So even if you don't use it in uh, a competition prep, 
any of the activities or the lessons shared earlier could really help your students learn how to think like an entrepreneur. But as you look at the at the CTSO competitive events on the screen here, you can see all the biggies have at least one event, sometimes multiple, that relate to entrepreneurship. So again, another good way to build in some integration of teaching those skills. But we have a few more things to share before we, we end our time with you today. First of all, we do webinars every month, just like the one we're doing today. And we record everything and we put it on our archives and you can watch them um, on demand. So most of them are around 30 to 45 minutes in length. Many topics, many different CTE areas, uh, best practices, product launches, information. Um, but every time you sign up, even if you cannot attend live, you will get that link to the recording. So very useful. We also try to be very interactive and or active in general on our social media and in our blog. So we have a blog, we have Facebook, we do Twitter, but um, we're always trying to engage with teachers, sometimes with students. You'll find uh, these are very active communities and we would uh, point them out to you to have you take a look. So we are uh, almost to the end of our time. So I know Emily has been watching our chat box. Uh, Emily, do we have any questions anyone has raised during our webinar today? Yeah, Denise, do you want to go over what everybody's going to be receiving after the webinar? Um, yes, you will be receiving a link to the recording if, in case you'd like to watch it again. You will also be receiving the slide presentation, which has extensive notes. Um, you'll be receiving a handout that has links um, for everything referred to in the webinar, so it makes it easier to find the information. And you will also be receiving uh, three free entrepreneurship uh, lessons with activities that we've also put together for you and a certificate of participation if you've been uh, live with us today. Perfect, and I'm not seeing any additional questions coming in at this time. All right, well, thank you all for attending our best practices for integrating entrepreneurship into CTE courses. We hope that you found a few easy ways to integrate a few activities here and there to bring entrepreneurship into your pathway program.